Welcome to Japan This Week, a news roundup from Japan Today for November 1st, 2024. I'm Jeff Richards. Well, there are more questions than answers after this weekend's general election in Japan. They are now really paving paradise to put up a parking lot in Tokyo's Jingu Gaiyan Park District. A young woman was murdered at a girls' bar, the low rent equivalent of a hostess club in Tokyo's working class Shimbashi area. And Facebook is on the hot seat in Japan after fake celeb endorsements appeared shilling shady investment schemes. All of this is coming up, plus a new poll to find out readers' thoughts on the upcoming U.S. election and how it will affect life in Japan. So let's get to those headlines. Well, the ruling party was derailed after this weekend's election, leaving Japan's political landscape in turmoil with no party winning a clear majority. Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba's ruling coalition, the Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, and its partner Komeito lost significant support due to a funding scandal and cost of living concerns. They went from having 279 seats to 215 in the lower house. The main opposition, the Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan, CDPJ, gained seats, going from 98 to 148, but they also fell short of a majority. Now the parties have 30 days to negotiate and form a coalition, creating a period of political uncertainty in Japan. Some might call it a vacuum. Some might be looking at opportunities for their parties to come out on top. This political instability affected Japan's currency, with the yen hitting a three month low amid fears of prolonged government negotiations and possibly a change in leadership. Japan is facing significant challenges, including economic issues and security concerns from neighboring China and North Korea, so the need for stable leadership is crucial at this time. The election was a major setback for Ishiba, who had only been prime minister for a few weeks and had called an early election to gain public support. His tenure as prime minister now seems uncertain, and it appears that his plan has backfired. Now, a little bit about the scandals that are plaguing the LDP. Ishiba's government had been damaged by a scandal involving unrecorded political donations. Just before the election, news broke that the LDP had sent campaign funds to local branches connected to unendorsed candidates, sparking public backlash. Smaller parties like the Democratic Party for the People, DPP, and Japan Innovation Party, JIP, gained seats and could play a decisive role in coalition talks. Both the DPP and JIP have a strong policy stance that differs from the LDP. The DPP proposes cutting Japan's sales tax in half until wages rise. Both the DPP and JIP have criticized the Bank of Japan's monetary policies during the weakening of the yen. Leaders of the DPP and JIP have ruled out a formal coalition with the LDP, but They are open to occasional cooperation on specific issues. There is going to be a lot of jockeying for position from these parties who will want to work with the LDP to form a coalition government. Japan's leading business lobby, Kaidenland, has called for a stable government, ideally centered around the LDP Komeito coalition, to tackle urgent economic issues like energy security and wage growth. The Diet will convene a session next week and is expected to vote for a new prime minister around November 11th. In order to stay prime minister, Ishiba will need some of the smaller opposition parties to join forces with the LDP and Kameto, otherwise, he'll be out of a job. Let's hear what the political pundits on Japan Today had to say. Isabel says, Uncertain times, but great to see the Japanese people using their democratic voice, punishing scandals, and a less than stellar running of the economy. Yeah, we could all use a bit of a change here in Japan. The LDP, with some minor hiccups, has been ruling Japan since the 1950s. Sapper John says, What a stale group of old men. Japan needs to elect younger politicians, especially more women. After all, aren't half the electorate female? Totally agree. 
And from Woody Lee. The LDP thought they could fool the public again. They were dead wrong. True. I wish they were dead wrong, but I have a feeling that come November 11th, the LDP will form a coalition with Cometo and some other party and they will still be in power. But I do hope that an opposition bloc appears and perhaps we might get a new prime minister with a new party affiliation. Here's my favorite name again, Dean Zaziziar. Sometimes you roll the dice and it comes up snake eyes. Next, could not agree more. In national news, residents of Tokyo are about to see even less green space. Tree cutting began in the city's historic Jingu Gaian Park District on Monday. Developers, led by real estate giant Mitsui Fudosan, have launched a 10 year multi billion dollar plan. This project includes building three skyscrapers. They plan to demolish a historic baseball stadium, the Mai Jingu Stadium, where the swallows play and replace it with a new one. Since it was announced, this project has been a major point of conflict between environmentalists and real estate interests and just general people on the streets who love that area. This is up close to the Shibuya area in a very vibrant part of the city. Critics argue Tokyo has limited green spaces, which is true and that parks are increasingly being developed for commercial use. This is also true. Just look at the new Mori buildings that have gone up. On Monday, small protests had gathered with the protesters objecting to the tree cutting and loss of this green space. The project is backed by Tokyo Governor Yuiko Koike, who, interestingly enough, is the former environment minister, which adds complexity to the debate. This is pretty much like pouring gasoline on a fire, as the Tokyo Metropolitan Government didn't really consider citizens' views on this topic. It seems to be all about business interests. And it's not just environmentalists, it's sports fans as well, too. The Meiji Jingu Stadium, which houses the Swallows, is almost 100 years old. Babe Ruth even played there. I imagine a lot of people are upset, and I think Japan Today readers probably echo their sentiments. Mark X comments, Another sad case of big business being able to run roughshod over anything and anybody. When will Japan realize that Tokyo doesn't need another ton of concrete structures but livable spaces? Nothing I can add to that comment. Absolutely true. From David Brent. This sort of thing is so common here, one has to conclude that the majority of Japanese people actually don't like nature much at all. This is funny because I do say this to a lot of people, that Japan hates nature and it hates people sitting down. You'll notice that every green space wherever you go, whether it's Tokyo or elsewhere, has a plethora of roped off areas that say no sitting, no walking, no treading, dogs on a leash, no skateboarding. They also don't have a lot of places to sit down, whether you're at a mall or green space, no park benches. That is starting to change here where I live in Yokohama, but I have to agree with this person's comment for sure. Dante KH. That's why I never understand people wanting to live in the heart of the city. No trees, rampant pollution, no clean air, overpriced rent, and huge taxes. With the implementation of remote work, living outside the city never seemed better. Yes, and things are much, much cheaper when you live outside of the metropolitan areas of Tokyo or Yokohama or Osaka. Japan is a very beautiful place when you get out of the city. And from Tamanegi. Understand their feelings totally. The sakura trees in my neighborhood have gradually disappeared over the last two decades, sometimes removed due to quote-unquote progress, other times for reasons unknown. The locals' reaction? Shogunai. For those listening outside of Japan, Shogunai is can't be helped. Say la vie, that's life. What are you going to do about it? In the crime section... A murder that occurred this week takes us into the seedy world of girls' bars where young women serve drinks to men until the early hours of the morning. These are kind of like hostess clubs, which are in the nightlife areas of the cities, but a little lower rent. Just after 5.30 a.m. on October 27th, a Sunday night, a 49-year-old man fatally stabbed an 18-year-old woman working at a bar in Tokyo's Shimbashi district kind of the working class area of the city. 
Police said Hiroyuki Chigira, who lives in Gunma Prefecture, stabbed the woman, Yuna Tanisawa, in the neck with a fruit knife. The bar manager held him down until the police arrived. Tanisawa, a Tokyo resident, was confirmed dead at the hospital. Police said Chigira was drinking in the bar alone for about six hours before he stabbed Tanisawa. According to Japanese media reports, Tanisawa and Chigira met on a quote-unquote dating app in June. However, she consulted with Tokyo police earlier in the month, saying that the man she was dating had stolen her money. Police said that man is believed to be Chigira, and that financial trouble between the two led to the murder. That's life in the big city. Well, what was the verdict from our Japan Today sleuths on this case? Kari Haruka's theory is... Before I even clicked on the article, I guessed that the perpetrator would have been a man in his 40s to 50s range. Let me guess even more, he's single, still living with his parents, and either unemployed or in a low-paying job, and he's angry at women for his failures in life and as a man. Rest in peace to the poor young girl, and I hope that he receives the harshest of sentences for taking her life away. Spot on. This from David K. Anderson. Barring extenuating circumstances, and it's hard to think of any likely ones, this creep should hang. If this is the person that actually did the crime, yes, we should throw the book at him. I don't think we should hang the person necessarily, but you do you. In business news, 30 plaintiffs in Japan are suing Meta, the owner of Facebook and Instagram, over fake ads with celebrity endorsements that promoted fraudulent investments. The plaintiffs are seeking a total of 435 million yen, around 2.9 million U.S. dollars, in damages from Meta. The fake ads featured endorsements from well-known Japanese figures, like entrepreneur Yusaku Maizawa, the billionaire who started Zozo Suits and who famously traveled to the International Space Station. Victims of the swindle were misled to transfer their money to quote-unquote investment accounts after viewing the ads. They argue that Meta didn't do enough to prevent these scams and should have investigated the ads more thoroughly, especially when celebrity names were used fraudulently. Maizawa and another entrepreneur, Takafumi Horie, the founder of Live Door, who ironically spent some time himself behind bars for securities fraud, are speaking out. They reportedly asked Meta to remove the false ads, but the plaintiff's lawyer claims that Meta ignored these requests, leading to more financial losses. Lawsuits were filed in several Japanese cities, including Osaka, Kobe, and Yokohama. The plaintiff's lawyer encouraged others who have been affected by the fake ads to come forward, hoping to increase regulations against false advertising. This is not the first time Meta has faced similar legal challenges here in Japan. Earlier this year, a smaller group sued the social media company in Kobe over a similar issue. Meta has been pushing to dismiss that claim. How did Japan Today readers react to this issue? You'd think we'd have some Facebook comments here, but we don't. Bertie Wooster chimed in with, It's about time. Facebook is riddled with fake ads. Electric bicycles reduced to 10,000 yen from 200,000 yen. Aside, that's about $100 down from $2,000. You check out the company and find the address is in the middle of a field somewhere and the number of employees is one. Yeah, uh, I don't know why I'm laughing at that, but there's a sucker born every minute. From GBR48. A famous person is pictured with a quote to invest in something so they clicked on a link to buy it with Bitcoin? Come on, the due diligence bar to investing is higher than that. Do they want everything that appears on the net to be checked by a civil servant and only go live when the paperwork gets the magic hunko of certification and is faxed to Meta? Use that chunk of your head between your ears. If it looks too good to be true, it will be. Side note, a hunko is a stamp that's used in Japan in place of a signature, and definitely use your brains, people. Finally, Flute offers, It's not happening only in Japan. Sorry for Meta, but I hope they lose and have to pay back any amount the victim lost at the bare minimum. Targeting ads is their job. 
They should have a real person check every single ad before publishing it, not just some program or whatever. Same for any message which could be one. Our final story this week concerns the November 5th U.S. presidential election. In a Japan Today news poll, which we ask every week about the top stories, we ask the following question. Who do you think would be better for Japan as the next U.S. president, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? The overwhelming majority picked Harris. She had 64% versus Trump's 36% at the time of recording. If you'd like to chime in, the poll will be up until 11 p.m. on Sunday night, Japan Standard Time. Let us know what you think about this question. Now, our readers pulled no punches with their answers. OK, 1517 wrote, Easy question, even easier answer. If you want a divider, cheater, insulter, instigator, draft-dodging, wannabe dictator for POTUS, your only option is Donald Drum. I don't know why people won't spell his name, but I get your point. Wasabi offers, On one hand, an incompetent, arrogant, idiot, egotistical, ignorant, racist, narcissistic, and first former U.S. president convicted of felony crimes, and the other, a regular political person. The choice should not be difficult for a regular and well-balanced human. We know which side of the fence these two commenters are on. Rob Beer adds, On the one hand, Trump might demand more money to host the U.S. military, which Japan does not need, should tell them to go home. But a Harris presidency is more likely to result in World War III, perhaps with all-out conflict between China and Japan. I don't want Japan to be the next Ukraine, so I hope Trump wins. There you go, from the other side of the aisle. Bakafugu. Harris is an empty vessel puppet that will do whatever her handlers tell her, and Trump is an unabashed sociopath with a god complex. Neither are good options for Japan. (laughs) Taking the middle road by sitting on the fence. That's what these polls are all about, I guess. Well, be sure to check out Japan Today next Wednesday, November 6th, Japan Standard Time, to see the results of the election and Japan's reaction on Japan Today. That was a quick recap of the news from Japan this week for Friday, November 1st, 2024. Thanks to the Japan Today editors for curating the stories for us and you can find the links to all of those in the show notes below. Since the news from Japan never stops, you can, and I know I say it every week, but you should, visit Japan Today at any time for all the latest information. Thanks to listening to Japan This Week. It would be great if you could rate and review us wherever you shop for content, including Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. From the Japan Today newsroom at G Plus Media in Tokyo, I'm Jeff Richards. Join us again next week for a quick recap of Japan's biggest and smallest stories. Sayonara, folks. <laughs>